to all those who devoted their lives to aviation. The Wings of Russia Studio presents Wings of Russia documentary. A man always wanted to fly. Today we know how to do it, while before this issue was not as obvious. To make wings like the birds have, or to screw into the air, both variants seemed quite natural. Finally, the first variant led to creation of an airplane, while the second of a helicopter. Prototypes of a helicopter were found in the remote ages. Go Hun, the Chinese scientist of the 4th century and the great Leonardo da Vinci of the 15th century, both proposed their versions of a helicopter. The genius Mikhail Lomonosov also worked in this sphere. In 1754 he built an aerodromic machine, which was nothing else than a small-sized helicopter. Of course, it did not fly, but experiments helped developing ideas which predetermined all further helicopter construction. Helicopters. The Air Rovers. At the dawn of aviation, the idea of building a helicopter attracted a lot of minds. From making models, they rushed to build natural size machines. However, with the energy of their muscles, they could only push the toe pedals, joining the army of losers. Human strength alone was not enough to fly. The steam engine available at that time could not help, since it was too heavy. The first internal combustion engines were heavy either. Therefore, all helicopters built before the 20th century remained on the ground. An important event in the helicopter construction history happened on August 24, 1907, when engineer Volumar took off for the first time on a rotary wing machine, which was called the Giroplane. It was designed by a French engineer, Louis Breguet. The Giroplane took off to a height of over a meter and stood there for about a minute. To achieve even such modest results, the machine was made maximum light. It had no controls. Mechanics kept the Giroplane from rolling over. This flight was said to be unmanned, while the first helicopter pilot is deemed to be Paul Cornu who in autumn of the same 1907 lifted a machine of his own design to a height of 30 centimeters. Rather successful in Russia was a student from Kiev, Igor Sikorsky. In 1910, his machine got off the ground, marking both enormous achievements and huge problems. Aircraft, which were more simple from the point of view of dynamics, by that time gained impressive success becoming completely worthy machines. Helicopter, on the contrary, disappointed the mechanic flight business enthusiasts. In reality, this proved the basic assumption that development of a helicopter was a much more difficult business than development of an aircraft. Nevertheless, all the main helicopter layouts were indeed created at the dawn of the 20th century. The first and the most obvious layout was the one with the single rotor. But tests showed that with the winding rotor, the machine itself starts moving in the opposite direction. 
creation of a tail rotor as solution of the torque reaction problem was offered in 1911 by Boris Yuryev, a student of the Royal Technical School. Since the main rotor was single, the layout was called the single rotor layout. Another way to cancel the torque reaction was application of two rotors winding in opposite directions. Their mutual placement gave birth to several layouts. Tandem, side-by-side, multi-rotor, and coaxial. There is another layout which looks like coaxial, but in fact it is a side-by-side -side layout with a maximum converged rotor axis. Rotors are synchronized, therefore such machines are called the synchropters. But the layout selection is only a beginning. A special mechanism is required to control the flight. One of them, which later became classical, was proposed by Boris Yuryev and was called the wobbly plate. It is responsible for the propeller blade angle against the air stream. It is also called the blade pitch. The more is the blade pitch, the higher is the lifting. If the blade pitch is changed synchronically, the helicopter will go vertically either up or down. So we are up. Now let's fly. Where to? Forward at least. In this case, the blade pitch should not change synchronically. This is how the direction and the speed are set. The mechanism changing the blade pitch was not the only puzzle. A simple enumeration of all the technical novelties would not reflect the revolutionary work performed by the helicopter construction pioneers. Development of the rotary wing machines promised to resolve the tasks which were beyond any capabilities of the aircraft or air balloons. What's important, a helicopter stopped being an aircraft competitor and became its adequate supplement. All this brought new interest to helicopters. Designers around the world set to resolve complicated and interesting tasks relating to its development. Only in Russia, research in this sphere did not progress first due to revolution and then to the Civil War. Only in 1929 the first of the USSR rotary wing machine was built by young engineers Nikolai Kamov and Nikolai Skrzynski. They were inspired by the works of a Spanish engineer Juan de la Sierra, who in the beginning of the 20s invented an interesting machine, the Autogiro, something between an airplane and a helicopter. This machine gets started as an airplane, with a propeller engine in front. The other propeller on top, winding under the incoming stream, creates the lift. This mode is called the auto-rotation. Autogiro, unlike the airplane, is not afraid of losing speed and, in the event of the engine failure, can land safely. Juan de la Sierra created its machine as a more safer version of an airplane. But it was not yet a helicopter, since it could not hover. Kamov and Skrzynski called their Autogiro the Kasker. It was built on the funds of the Aviation Association, but the leading force was enthusiasm of its designers. Kasker took off in 1929, while in 1931 the Autogiro topic was seriously taken up by the Tsagi. 
Under the supervision of Alexei Cheryomukhin, there was a group formed to develop special layouts, comprising design team 